Thoughts and comparison between Trump and Bernie fans. Both hate trade, immigration, both are collectivists. Are they the same movement? Is conservatism blind patriotism motivated by altruism? Um, yeah, in many respects, they're the same movement. Uh, but I don't think either of them are, are, are the same kind of conservatives because it's not an intellectual movement. This movement is a, a movement of, you know, both Trump and Bernie, uh, a movements of, uh, you know, Marxist, in, in a sense Marxist, um, of, of the importance of the working class above all else. Uh, altruism, uh, the, the needs of the needy are the primary. And nationalism. Now, Bernie plays down the nationalism, but it's there, particularly when he talks about immigration, when he's done running for president. Trump highlights the nationalism, right? Bernie emphasizes his hatred of the rich. Trump downplays that, but it's there. And you can see it sometimes, for example, when they talked about taxes, uh, uh, Trump was happy to raise taxes on the rich. It was Republicans who held taxes on the rich down, uh, on the rich, the you know, uh, down in the, uh, when when taxes were cut. Um, both are ultimately pragmatists. Bernie's not a committed. If you saw Bernie's talk about socialism, he's not a committed socialist. He doesn't know what socialism is. He's a pragmatist. They're both very similar. Now Bernie is on the left, so he's associated with a certain social movement of the left. Trump is affiliated with evangelicals. He is of the religionist side. Now you're asking, is conservative blind patriotism motivated by altruism? As you saw, it's, it's not blind patriotism. It's a form of patriotism. It's a form of xenophobic patriotism, which is turning into that. Uh, motivated by altruism, motivated by the common good. That is the above all. That is the most important thing. The other thing both Trump and Bernie reject and cons modern conservatives reject, or these modern conservatives reject, is the idea of individual liberty, the idea of in individual matters. So in spite of what Amari and these new conservatives claim, the left is not about individual autonomy. You as an individual have no autonomy. You are a member of a group. You are self-identified from birth, in a sense, by the color of your skin, by your gender, or by your lack of gender. And it's all determined by your genes anyway. So you're not a member, you're not an individual expressing your individuality, certainly not by using reason as, as what makes us human, therefore makes us individuals. You are a member of a group and you're expressing, what you're expressing is just your feelings as a member of a group. Both the left and the right today are pure collectivists. There is no individualistic strand, strand anymore. There's this tiny little strand among conservatives who try to latch on to individualism while still clinging to religion, which is hard for them. And there's some libertarians clinging on to individualism while clinging on to their subjectivism, philosophical subjectivism. I'm not talking about economic subjectivism. Philosophical subjectivism, which is hard for them. And then there's us, subjectivists. And in a sense, we are the only voice in the world today fighting for true individualism. It's on us. And this is why it is so goddamn disappointing and so goddamn disgusting that so many objectivists have become uh, 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 fans and, and, and rally around this new nationalistic conservatism and view them as an ally. No, they are the enemy. And we're surrounded, everybody's an enemy. But if we don't fight, who is going to fight? If we don't stand up for individualism, who is going to stand up for individualism? There is literally nobody else to do it. We're it. So don't view the enemy as an ally. There's nothing worse because you hate the left more. Even if you hate the left more, you've got to recognize You've got to hate the right as well. Only when you hate both of them. I'm not saying equally, but hate them both. I hate them equally. I hate the right more in many respects. Only if you hate them both can you actually fight a proper battle for the soul and the future of this country. Only then can we change the dynamics of politics in this world, of education in this world, of culture in this world. But it might be too late. You know, we might have lost, 
because we have so few allies and even the people who claim to be on our side are not. They're blinded by hatred of the left, just like these nationalist conservatives are. All right. If the liberals are afraid to identify their program by its proper name, if they advocate every specific step, measure, policy, and principle of statism, but squirm and twist themselves into semantic pretzels with such euphemisms as the welfare state, the new deal, the new frontier, they still preserve a semblance of logic, if not of morality. It is the logic of a con man who cannot afford to let his victims discover his purpose. Besides, most liberals are afraid to let themselves discover that what they, that what they advocate is statism. They do not want to know or to admit that they are the champions of dictatorship and slavery. So they evade the issue for fear of discovering that their goal is evil. Immoral as this might be, what is one to think of men who evade the issue for fear of discovering that their goal is good? What is the moral stature of those who are afraid to know or to proclaim that they are the champions of freedom? What is the courage and the integrity of those who outdo their enemies in smearing, misrepresenting, spitting at and apologizing for their own ideals? What is the rationality of those who expect to trick people into freedom, cheat them into justice, pull them into progress, con them into preserving their rights, and, while indoctrinating them with statism, put one over on, on them and let them wake up in a perfect capitalist society some morning. Such, unfortunately, are a great many of today's conservatives. Gentlemen, if you want to save capitalism, there is only one type of argument that you should adopt the only one that has ever won in any moral issue, the argument from self-esteem. Check your premises, convince yourself of the rightness of your cause, then fight for capitalism with full moral certainty. 